Okay, my name is Kenny Burns, KB Tours in Washington, D.C. And what we do is uh, African American Heritage Tour of the city of Washington. And since there's a pandemic here in the United States, uh, we really can't do physical tours. So I was trying to decide what to do. So I was kind of curious about several things in African American history, like uh, cowboys, black cowboys. I was interested in the Pullman Porters, who to me basically were like the Tuskegee Airmen, you know, revered in, in the black um, neighborhoods of the United States. So I decided to use KB Tours uh, YouTube channel to do different videos. I'm trying to do like one or two videos every week. And hopefully when this uh, pandemic ends, people come to Washington and we can give them a great African-American heritage tour. Then the Pullman Porters were the men of the railroad. And the Pullman Porters were started by a gentleman named George Pullman. Now George Pullman uh, went to several railroads in the United States in the 1860s. And he decided to have sleeping cars and he wanted uh, a certain type of person to work on that sleeping car he wanted former slaves to work on the car and they would have to be dark-skinned men that was uh, very dark-skinned men because he figured that dark-skinned men wouldn't blend in with everybody else and he just thought that they would be better uh, conditioned, wherever, you know, wherever that was, to serve people in a certain way. Now, Pullman was an uh, entrepreneur, smart, uh, and the Pullman car worked. Now they had to create these uh, sleeping cars, you know, put sleeping berths in them, and uh, it took a little bit of work to do. Now these men were very special. They worked 400 hours a month, and they were pay they were the worst paid in on the railroad. Pullman porters made most of their money off of tips. Uh, many in the African American uh, community admired them because these men actually were very smart. Being a getting to be a Pullman porter was very hard to do. Most men who were Pullman porters stayed 20 to 40 years on the job. It was extremely rare that any of them got fired. Now the one drawback of being a Pullman Porter was people called you George. No matter your name could be David, and they would call you George after George Pullman. And the Pullman Porters didn't like that too much. Matter of fact, later on in this story, we'll explain a little bit more about that. At one time, there was over seven thousand Pullman Porters. Of the 7,609 were attendants. They would, you know, work in the uh, sleeping cars, buffet lounges, club cars, and there's also 48 Pullman Pullman maids. Um, Pullman porters are always very neat. That's that's something that they did themselves. They um, had a very high uh, standard for themselves, which was great. Now, Pullman Porters uh, would go around the country and they would go to various sites, various cities, and they would drop off newspapers. This, this was interesting, because down south, people didn't always get the, the correct news. So Pullman Porters would often take the Chicago Defender and the Pittsburgh Courier 
down south and just drop them at certain locations so people could pick them up and read them oh wow so this is what's going on and also they would uh, tell people about jazz and different types of um, uh, music so it it they were actually the the physical green book of America just like um, Victor Hugo Green wrote uh, the Green Book. Well, Pullman reporters actually were physical Green Books. This is Asa Philip Randolph. Now, Asa Philip Randolph, uh, we'll just say he was a very, very intelligent man. And the Pullman reporters for years had been trying to become a union. So in the 1920s, they became a union, thanks to Asa Philip Randolph. But it took until the 1930s where the, ran, uh, where the railroad actually signed a labor contract with the Pullman Porters. Now, yeah, like in 1925, the Pullman Porters became the first successful black trade union in the country. Now, just to show you how sneaky the railroad was, they would go to churches in the YWCA and the YMCA, and they would actually give the people money, say, tell the Pullman Porters not to un uh, become a union, but it didn't work. Now the Pullman Porters had what they called the three L's. Learn, listen, and look. They would look at what people were reading and get information. They would listen to where people were putting their money into, what stocks. And they also would learn where these men and women were sending their kids. Because the Pullman Porters knew education was essential to the African American race, if you wanted to get better. A lot of Pullman Porters bought homes and they uh, educated their children and, just, and made sure their grandchildren get educated. So the Pullman Porters played a very vital part in American history. So, this is our first uh, little video for KB Tours. I hope you enjoyed it, and there will be many more coming. Thank you.